DC motors are great for a lot of reasons. Easy to buy, easy to control, inexpensive and popular. There is one problem though. If you want to get serious with your robots or projects, you need to control movement very precisely. You either want to control the speed of the motor, position of the motor, or both at the same time. If you have two theoretically identical motors, they may not work exactly as they should and your robot may turn even though it should go straight. That's a big problem in some of my projects. Imagine a robot like Roomba or those tiny micro mouse robots that go through the maze. They really need to know where they are and go perfectly straight. To achieve this kind of precision we may use stepper motors. Those are used in 3D printers, but in robotics most of the time they are not that useful for a lot of various reasons. So what's the alternative? A DC motor but with an encoder. What is encoder? Let me explain. Encoder is a device that converts motion or position to analog or digital signals. Such signals can be processed by an Arduino. Thanks to that we can control motors really precisely. But how basic encoder works? There is a small disk with holes for optical encoders and magnets for magnetic encoders. There are also two sensors. To count the revolutions we would need just one sensor, but to detect the direction of those revolutions we need two of them. Whenever the state of the first sensor changes to high, we check if the other sensor is low. If it is, it means that the motor is turning in this direction. And if second sensor value is high, it means that the motor is turning in the opposite direction. That's pretty simple mechanism that make it super easy to use encoders. Before we continue, a quick message from the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is LCSC Electronics. LCSC is an online store with electronic components. You can find here almost anything you want. There are Arduino boards, microcontrollers, resistors, capacitors, everything in any package and you can buy just few components or thousands. They also have discounts if you buy more. I will put a link to LCSC in the description, go check them out. This is a great place to buy components that are normally hard to buy or really expensive. And now let's get back to the project. Let's take a look at motors with encoders. Here's the first motor, it's from old inkjet printer. In new inkjet printers they use DOS instead of stepper motors because it's actually cheaper to use them. And here in the back you can see the optical encoder. This is a very simple and small motor. But let's actually focus on this one. This is also a DC motor with gearbox and encoder, this time magnetic encoder. This encoder has 11 pulses per revolution and the gearbox ratio is 1 to 34. So there are 34 revolutions of the motor shaft for one revolution of the output shaft. So for one full revolution of the output shaft we have 374 pulses of the encoder. There are 6 cables that we need to connect and we also need a breadboard. I will use Arduino Nano because it's small and you can easily plug it to the breadboard. A motor controller, potentiometer and screw terminal because it's easier to plug those to the breadboard and then connect the cables to the screw terminal than just directly plug those cables to the breadboard. It's not reliable. So here is the fritzing schematic and let's connect that. Let me now at least try to explain the code for the Arduino. I'm really bad at explaining code, but I will do my best. Here in the beginning we have the include of the PID controller library. It makes it easy to use the PID controller, really good library. Next we have some values that we need to define. Here is the interrupt and it basically means that whenever there is a rising state on the digital pin number 2, the encoder function is triggered. And the encoder function is right here, it let us basically count the position of the encoder, it's very important and it's also important to make it with the interrupt. If you want to know more about interrupts, just google it Arduino interrupts, there is a lot of information about that. Next we set the point of the PID algorithm to potentiometer read and we do some basic math here. I will link this code in the description so if you want to see it, test it, maybe understand it, there is a link to github in the description, go check it out and now I will test it. It works, but you probably can't really see that, so let me quickly design something to visualize it and I will show you how it works. Oh, 
That's much better. Now you will see everything. By the way, I am powering this motor with my lab bench power supply with about 6 volts. So yeah, let's connect the Arduino to the USB cable. And now we can control the motor. That's pretty much it for the first example. It's a very simple setup, but it's super useful to tune your PID algorithm to find the best values and check if there are no overshooting. The potentiometer is just perfect for that. And now let me show you the second example. It's almost exactly the same, almost, but this time instead of potentiometer, we'll send the value through the serial port. So this is a little bit more useful because you can actually control the position of the motor precisely. So I can type, for example, 1000. And now the motor goes to the 1000 position on the encoder, so it goes basically 1000 steps on the encoder. Let's type 0, and now it goes back to the initial position. What I would like to do next is designing a dedicated driver, of course Arduino based dedicated driver that you could easily connect with I2C, maybe another kind of communication to another Arduino and delegate the task of measuring the encoder values and everything to this driver so that it's easier to implement the encoded motors into your projects. It will take me some time to design something like this, so we have to wait a little bit for that, but I think it will be a cool project. I hope you enjoyed this very short video about encoded motors. Of course, there is a lot more to say about encoders and motors, but let's keep this video short. I wanted just to show you how to implement this kind of motor in your project and show you example code. Links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching and thanks to LCSC for sponsoring this video. As always, happy making, bye.